By looking at eyes through a microscope, scientists can discover ancient history. This is exactly what happened when a group studied samples taken from the ice of Mount Kilimanjaro. But they were not prepared to see the results. Deep in the mountain's ice, millions of years old, they found evidence supporting something straight out of the Bible's book of Genesis. And what they found surprised scientists around the world. With modern technology, scientists are able to drill into the ice cores of glaciers and ice sheets, extracting samples that are up to 800,000 years old. Called ice core sampling, it takes out samples from permafrost, which contains records up to millions of years old. This is how a group of scientists was able to find remains of what they believed to be evidence of something dating back to biblical times. Over time, ice forms layers, freezing each one with its own special history, climate, fossil records, and even water samples that might have frozen in a bubble. All of these are preserved very well thanks to the cold. It's all there, waiting for scientists to find it, extract it, and study it thoroughly. They were excited to see what secrets the core sample held, but no one expected to find out what they found in the ice on Mount Kilimanjaro. Through this medium, scientists believe that ice cores may hold the key to a long-lost story, old messages from Anne's past, letting us know what was happening back then. Even the story that people thought was based on fiction. But only with the drilling of Mount Kilimanjaro had scientists shown that some stories, specifically some aspects of the Book of Genesis, could have really happened and can be proven. Things are about to get biblical. Located in the Kilimanjaro National Park in Tanzania, the towering Mount Kilimanjaro rises to a whopping 19,341 feet in height, the tallest freestanding mountain in the world. It is, however, becoming more barren as time goes by. This dormant volcano has recently been the subject of numerous scientific studies as its glaciers and ice caps are expected to disappear completely between 2030 and 2050. The first explorers to climb the mountain will soon be up. Although Mount Kilimanjaro is not part of a mountain range itself, it consists of three peaks. The Kibo stands at 16,893 feet above sea level, and the Mwenzi rises to 16,893 feet above sea level. It is here where most climbers start to descend. For the truly adventurous, however, this is only midway. The third peak, Shira, has a huge peak of 4,000 meters. Altogether, it is an impressive mountain with a lot of history buried below the surface. For millennia, the peaks were active volcanoes. In 2000, a team of geologists led by Lonnie Thompson of Ohio State University traveled to Mount Kilimanjaro in search of answers about why the ice was melting at such a rapid rate. They were able to drill six cores in their hopes of finding out why. But just as they were about to leave, one member was forced to stay behind for a month, while the rest of the team continued on their research trip. Harry's ended up staying on the mountain for two months, but not before extracting samples from each core that could provide insight into what was happening with the ice. Thompson and his team were not the first to attempt to drill into Kilimanjaro. In fact, there have been over 60 attempts to drill into this beautiful mountain since 1908. However, Thompson's mission was not easy. Not only did he have to obtain permission from a number of Tanzanian agencies to drill on the mountain, but once permission was given, the group of scientists had to lug all their equipment up the 4,000 plus meter summit. This is not an easy task, and it took 67 porters and helpers to get everything up the mountain. It's easy to think that drilling six cores is a quick and easy task. After all, it's just a matter of drilling down into the earth and extracting some rock, but it's not as simple as it seems. Each core has to be drilled to the perfect length. Samples have to be from 30 feet to nearly 170 feet long, and then extracted in cylindrical form. And then, there's the time it takes for all six samples to be collected and analyzed before they can be published. The team spent over two years studying their findings before they were ready to publish their article. His article, Kilimanjaro Ice Core Records, Evidence of Holocene Climate Change in Tropical Africa, discussed how climate change was negatively affecting the ice of Mount Kilimanjaro. It was supposed to be research to show the rapid effects of climate change. But as the team of geologists studied their samples, they found something entirely different, something they hadn't expected to find. 
something that went hand in hand with the book of Genesis. How was this possible? According to their findings, the scientists stated their cores to between 1951 and 195 2, a time when nuclear bomb tests were being conducted. The tests led to the formation of a radioactive isotope called chlorine-36. The good news for scientists is that this isotope allowed them to trace the entire history of ice cylinders. With this amazing method, they would be able to get results. But were they ready to learn the truth that has been hidden for so long? It was a long time ago. But it's easy to see how the drought would get anyone down. In 8,300 before Christ, Thompson discovered evidence suggesting that a drought in Africa lasted for 500 years. That's right minus 500 years of not having any water. In fact, he even said the lakes were drying up. But don't worry, this isn't going to happen again anytime soon. According to an Ohio State University news release, Thompson told those present at his discovery, we believe this represents a time when the lakes of Africa were drying up. In order to better understand how droughts have affected the Southwest, paleoclimatologist David Stoll used tree rings to track climate changes over time. Stoll found evidence of droughts that occurred 8,300 years ago, 5,200 years ago, and most recently 4,000 years ago. However, it wasn't the first or third drought that piqued the interest of Thompson and his team. It was the third drought, which occurred 4,000 years ago and lasted 300 years. The first two droughts were much shorter in duration than this third one. In the Middle East, a drought that occurred in the year 2000 before the common has been linked to the story of Joseph in the book of Genesis, Jewish Torah, and Islamic Quran. The story is told in chapters 37 to 50 of Genesis, where it is related to how Joseph was born to Jacob and Rachel. The researchers used computer models to determine that a volcanic eruption at Thera, now Santorini, Greece would have been capable of producing enough sulfur dioxide gas to cause such devastation across such a large region. According to the story, Jose was the favorite of his parents. He was even given a cloak of many colors as a token of his father's affection. The gift, along with Jose's ability to interpret dreams, enraged his brothers to the point that they conspired to murder his brother. Fortunately, they didn't. Instead, they sold him into slavery and smeared goat's blood on his coat, telling people that he was dead. It never ceases to amaze us how comical, but also how true, these stories tend to be. Joseph's life was not easy. As a young man, he was sold into slavery by his brothers who were jealous of him because their father loved him more than them. This led him to Egypt, where he became a slave to a rich man named Potiphar. As if that wasn't bad enough, all was going from bad to worse for Joseph. After some alleged claims by Potiphar's wife, Joseph was put in jail where he remained until he was called by Pharaoh, who had heard about his gift for interpreting dreams. While in prison, Joseph put his dream interpretation skills to use, helping his fellow prisoners understand their dreams. The first person was the head baker of the Egyptian Pharaoh. Unfortunately, Joseph saw his dream as a warning that the baker would be executed. The second person, the ruler's cabbearer, then had a dream in which Joseph said that he would be restored to his old position. The relationship between history and modern discoveries is yet to come. In the book of Genesis of the Bible, it is said that two prophecies of Joseph ended up coming true. Stories of his abilities spread and eventually reached Pharaoh, who was in need of someone like Joseph. As it says in Genesis, Joseph's incredible abilities caught the eye of Pharaoh, and he soon needed someone like Joseph. It so happened that the Egyptian ruler had been having his own strange dreams and needed someone who could interpret them for him. The Pharaoh had a strange dream that scared him, and he wanted someone to interpret it for him. It is interesting to think how superstitious the rulers could be. It was going to be an event that would save Joseph's life. In his dream, Pharaoh saw seven emaciated cattle eating seven well-fed cows. Asking Joseph for his interpretation, the slave said that it meant that Egypt would have seven good years followed by seven years of drought and famine. Impressed by this interpretation, Pharaoh made Joseph a vizier, chief advisor, and official. Based on the dream, Joseph set out to store as much grain as possible during the seven good years so that the Egyptian people could get through the seven difficult years ahead. In the end, the stores saved the town, 
allowing Egypt to flourish. The relationship between the story and the findings is as follows. But it is not the only thing that scientists found then. The Bible states that there was a massive drought that lasted for three years, seven months, and 11 days. This drought is said to have occurred around 4,000 years ago, which coincides with the findings of Thompson and his team. The researchers discovered that there was a drought that lasted for 300 years, between 3,600 and 3,700 years ago. It also found evidence of famine during this time period. So how does this connect to the biblical story? Evidence that the drought occurred all those years ago wasn't the only thing Thompson and his team uncovered in their ice score findings. In one of the cores, Thompson found a thin layer of dust. The dust was a great find that supported his claims. Thompson's team found that the layer of dust coincided exactly with when they believed Noah's flood occurred, which supports their belief that there was a strong connection between these two events. Joseph's story is one of the most beloved in the Bible, but it's also one of the strangest. And when you look into it, you'll find that there are a few things missing from his story that don't quite add up, like how, for example, he could have predicted seven good years of prosperity and seven bad years of famine. Well, it turns out that Joseph's prophecy of seven good years and seven bad years wasn't just a lucky guess. It was historically accurate. We know this because scientists have found dust from the Sahara Desert in ice cores taken from Greenland, which suggests that at least some parts of Joseph's story were real. Of course, there are parts of the story that are probably embellished. No one believes that Joseph was actually sold into slavery by his brothers, but they might have been jealous because he was their father Jacob's favorite son, and Jacob did have 12 sons. Still, Anyone who reads this story can't help but feel inspired by Joseph's persistence in spite of all his trials. And if nothing else, it reminds us to be grateful for what we have. And now there is evidence that says his story might have more truth than fiction. Although some people do not see the book of Genesis as a historical fact, much can be said about current scientific discoveries and their relationship to the ins and outs of Old Testament history. It's hard to argue that the findings by Thompson and his team are somehow related to the story of the great drought that occurred 4,000 years ago. But the core samples don't lie. There's now more evidence than ever that the Bible might be speaking truth.